As a fan of Generate Blocks, I always like to see what new features are being brought out. And the alpha build of Generate Blocks and Generate Blocks Pro has just been released for us to start testing out. And there are a couple of things that I wanted to show you. Now, most of these are quality of life, but they improve the overall use case of working with Generate Blocks. And for me, that is a lot more important than always bringing out brand new features. So I want to go over what they are today. So first of all, what I would recommend you do is take a look at the link in the description that's going to give you all of the features that I'm going to cover and probably a lot more in more detail. So first up, let's go ahead and take a look at a really simple layout. You can see I've simply got a heading and I've got some content. Now you'll notice one of the first things inside here, which isn't addressed inside you working with Gutenberg, we don't have sort of container and heading and all those kinds of things. We now actually have content. And as you can see, quality of life is the title. And you can see underneath it, we've got this content or a little bit of a brief version of the content. So now we can visually and easily see exactly what it is that we're selecting inside the list view of Gutenberg. Now, when you're working with designs, you may find times where you place things onto the page and then you realize you needed to put those into a container. Then you have to go through the process of dragging and dropping and it's not always that easy in Gutenberg. Well, we can kind of avoid that now with another one of these quality of life updates. We'll select the first block that I want and select the second block that I want. And now we get these new icons. The first one allows us to add this to a container. Second one, we can add it to a row or the third one, we can add it to a stack. So let's go ahead and add this to a container. And once you do that, we now get a container and inside that container is the content that we wanted inside there. Now you also notice that we've got the word container and that doesn't really mean much to anybody. And again, going back to that whole sort of Gutenberg naming convention, which we can't do right now, well, Generate Blocks has kind of got around that and implemented it in their own way. So we've got this container. Go to the right-hand side, scroll down to Advanced. You can see we now have an option for the block label. So let's just call this Quality of Life Container. And as you can see now, if you take a look at the list view, that updates in real time and we now have a name on there. This just makes the whole design process just a lot easier. We've seen this in Bricks, we've seen it in Elemental and lots of other places. It just makes organizing things so much quicker and easier. Now, let's say we've got the container, but inside there, we've got a more complex design and we want to add those into their own stacks or columns and things like that. You'll notice that once we select those, we get these two additional icons, add to row, add to stack, which is basically your columns. So we say add to row, click, and we now have a container inside and we've got these set up and this is set up as a row. And as you can see, if we go inside, we've got our two relevant different pieces of content. Now, well, we've got that there. Maybe you didn't want to set that to a row. You want to set it to a column. Well, you can adjust it over on the right-hand side. But if you're like a lot of newer users, all these options over on the right-hand side don't really mean a heck of a lot. And it can be kind of confusing to figure out what it is you're trying to achieve. Well, this is where one of the new features inside Generate Blocks makes this a little bit more visual. So I switched over to a different example to demonstrate this because it's a little bit easier, a little bit more visual. Let me select the parent container that contains three different headlines. And we'll get this new icon, which is the kind of content position. I'll call it like the Rubik's Cube. If we click on this, and I'll leave the panel on the right-hand side open. If you click on this, you can see this is just using the default layout. So it just stacks things on top of each other like we'd see with a normal div. And if you take a look on the right-hand side, you can see the layout is set to be display default. But if we want to set these to be horizontal or vertical, we can just click on these visual representations of it. So we say we want to stack these horizontally, you can click and stack them horizontally. Or stack them vertically, you can stack them vertically. And if you take a look over on the right hand side, you'll see as we make changes inside this little new option, everything updates over on there to show us exactly how we're setting things up, whether it's a row or a column. And then underneath, we get these nine squares, and these allow us to position things horizontally and vertically, which is the same as you've got with your align and your justify options on the right-hand side. So we can just click the bottom right-hand corner, and now everything goes into the bottom right-hand corner. And you can see align items is set to right, justify content is set to bottom. When I think center, center, you can do that. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. You kind of get the picture, but this means it's a visual easy way of being able to make these changes for people that don't necessarily understand all these options or you just prefer to work in this way. So again, another one of those nice little updates that makes this a little bit more visual, a little bit easier to understand.
Now, one of the other key areas when it comes to working with designing websites is you want as much flexibility as possible for the different units of measurement that you're working with. Now, if you take a quick look at the changelog, link in the description, this will give you more information. But up until recently, we've been kind of limited on what we could use. But now we have the access to REMS, we have VH, VW, we have characters. We can also use more complex, advanced options like Calc, VAR, Clamp, Max, Min, those kinds of things. And the way it works is really simple. Let's go ahead and select this headline as an example. Let's come over into our sizing. And inside there, we've got what we've normally had for quite some time. And you'll see if we click on the PX, that'll now show us all the different units we can use as standard. But the nice thing about this is we don't have to select from there. We can simply type in what we want and we'll replace the default pixel value with whatever we choose. Let's say we want to do this 50%. We'll do 50 and we'll put the percentage sign in and you can see it immediately changes to the percentage. We can do the same thing again. We can say rem and it'll update to rem. You can see we can just easily go ahead and we can just use characters, for example. So let's say 30 ch and we get 30 characters. Let's say 50 ch and you can see it updates accordingly. The only caveat here is don't put a space in after the unit that you want to use. For example, when we've got this 50, if I put a space after that, you'll see that basically ignores everything I come after it because it doesn't really know what to do. So again, another nice simple way of working, but if you want to use these sort of vars that you want to use clamp and so on, you can use those inside you as well. Now, another quick update that I think is more of a nice to have, but it's good to see it being updated is now when we come into spacing, you will see we now have the ability to lock our different sides together. We just have a nicer way of working. So you see currently this is set to 30 on all sides. If I wanted to change the right to say 50, for example, I can change that. And I can say the left to be 50. And if I want to use a different unit of measurement, I can do exactly what I've just shown you. So I can do CH, for example, and you see it updates. So it works inside the spacing and the margin as opposed to just working with the sizing option. So that's good to see. And if you want to, you can also link these together and set whatever value you want inside this. So let's just say we want to put in something like 20 and we'll say pixels for this. You can see now all four sides of padding have been adjusted accordingly. And the same thing goes for your margin. So you can link these together or you can unlink them and you can use individual values. And the cool thing is you can easily mix and match. So for example, we may want to say at the top, we want to put 50 pixels in. We'll say on the left hand side, we want to put 20 ch in and on the bottom we want to put two rem in so you can see we can mix and match those values to whatever we want but i recommend it probably not in most cases but you can do it if you want to and again like i said you can link these together and set up whatever you want and those unit and measurement options are available as well as the advanced things like vars and characters and you know, all those kinds of things they're all available to you now, the final thing I want to show you is more to do with making sure that you have less problems when it comes to GDPR and so on, and you reduce the risk of once you offload a site to a client, them accidentally using Google Fonts, which you may not want them to have access to. If you hop over to the settings inside Generate Blocks, we have a new option that says Disable Google Fonts. We can select it and hit Save. And now if you come into anywhere, you've got text, we've got this little body text under the typography settings, open the font family. And now we only have system or local fonts. We don't have access to those Google fonts, which reduces that risk of someone accidentally choosing one that you don't want them to choose and then potentially get into problems. Now that's basically what I want to cover. This is a really quick overview of these new features, but I think these new quality of life updates and changes just make working with generate blocks a little bit quicker, a little bit more consistent, and just generally easier. But as always, if you're a generate blocks user, let me know what you think of these updates in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.